Jason Shaw wins the lag. You may break. Well, a very ready, good sir. evening, everyone, and welcome to finals day. This is our semifinal, our second semifinal. Jason Shaw versus Victor Zelinski to see who will meet Francisco Sanchez Ruiz in the final of the Predator World 8 Ball. Welcome to San Juan, we're at the Convention Center. And that is not the dream start for Eagle Eye Jason Shaw. A break and cue ball into the corner pocket. Yeah, he doesn't want to see any more of these as this semifinal unfolds. I'm Jim Weich. I'll be steering you through these first few shots. And what a match Zelinski had in his quarterfinal. Leading up to the semi against Shaw. 10-9, Hill Hill it was, and his countryman. Wojtek Shevchak missed the 15 that would have left the eight there. Well, he jumped out of his chair faster than I've ever seen him move. <coughs> Dished up. They embraced, and here he is in the semifinals. And with an opportunity to avenge a recent loss to Shaw just a couple weeks ago, Jason beat him in the International Open that was played in Virginia. And even more recently, Shaw was the one that unceremoniously bumped Zelinski to the loser's bracket here. First round, he lost to Shaw. So he's definitely got revenge on his mind. And one thing I think all players can agree on it's he who laughs last, laughs loudest. Ten seconds. And the eight ball in the middle of the table will pass the 15 to the bottom left corner. So just how Victor sees this unfold. Just making sure he can get through to that six if he just slow rolls this in. And at this time, I'd like to wel welcome my colleague, Tony Robles. Got too, too many autographs, Tony. You're signing way too many autographs <laughs> en route to the comm box. I feel kind of dumb because <laughs> I'm over here thinking that Victor's practicing. I didn't see the referee say that it's time to start, so I'm thinking he's just practicing. <laughs> and then Mark White told me, oh, they started. And I said, oh, my God. No worries, pal. We got your back. Eight deposited, and Zelinski opens his account here, secures rack number one. It was a break and a scratch. For Jason? From Jason Shaw in the first rack, and that brought Zelinski out of his chair, Tone. So you're up to speed. Okay, did he go scratch straight in the side, or no? Nope, he, he scratched. In? It was kicked into the corner pocket, scratched in the yeah. top right corner. Yeah, that's, that's one of those unfortunate ones, I guess. And our referee, Dwayne Payne, using the arrow rack, Predator arrow rack, getting the balls together. So important that they're all touching. Get a good displacement from the break. And I'll tell you another thing. And, and Tony, we were talking prior to this match. His match against Chef Check on table number two, they couldn't buy a ball off the break. Yeah. Let's see if table one treats him a little bit more, more and, kindly. And look what he's doing. He's actually breaking from the rail because he can get more power that way. He, he can accelerate more. Bridges a little more side. Look at, woo, almost made a ball. Wow, the nine got kicked in. It's a big break for Victor there. Still laying a little funny there, Jim. Yeah, I see the shake of the head kind of tells that story, Tony. Watch where the two ball stops in front of that object ball. Right there. He can still make it in the side, in the corner, but he just has to work for it if he decides to go with solids. I have to look at the stripes. 
I think the 10 goes. If the 10 goes, that might be a move there. I can see him shooting the 10, 13, I mean the, the 14, 13, or vice versa and shooting the 10, stopping the cue ball there for the 12. Oh, he's going to take care of that now. That's a good shot. The control these kids had now, these gym is crazy. Well, that was a great shot. Right off the bat, he's gone after his problem ball, and he's landed on it nicely. And as you said, Tony, if that one passes into the bottom corner, I think the 10 ball it was, then this is a guilt edged opportunity for him right here early. Well, the good thing about it is that he took care of it early in the rack while he still had other balls on the table. And that's the number one mistake people make. It's a cardinal sin in eight ball, getting rid of all your balls before taking care of the problem ball as soon as possible. Now, if the 10 goes in the top corner, oh, he's going to get it out of there. It doesn't go. Wow. Now, well, another shot. That's matured the situation nicely. Yeah, this Predator World 8-Ball Championship has really opened a lot of eyes. So many good young players. We had the World Junior Championship here. How inspiring was that? Finals were all played yesterday. And see all those young kids. 44 countries represented here. Yeah. Let's see if he's going to go between the seven and the rail, or is he going to come around two rails? Or just one rail? Nope, he's been two rails. Not for nothing, but he got a couple of nice, friendly bumperonis here. But the, the reason why I think he got away with it is because of the speed that he hit it with. Well, he's definitely off the mark. It's so important in this race to 10. The winner to play Sanchez Ruiz for the world eight ball crown that we haven't had a champion, recent champion in a decade. Chang was the last one, 2012. And Zelinski, a two nothing advantage right out of the gate. <laughs> Only Ralph Suke and Chang Jun Lin made their way here to San Juan, the beautiful island, of Puerto Rico, to contest the Predator World Eight Ball. And as I said, it's been a decade since Chang won that event. The very first winner of the World 8-Ball Championship, Efren Reyes, 2004. Efren Reyes. Wow, that's great. Well, we all know Efren can play every game very, very well. I consider him the greatest all-around player that ever lived. Uh, you and a host of others, I think, Tony. He definitely led the Philippine charge, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, even in one pocket, I can't think of a single single player that could ever beat him even when he was in his prime. Was imp what was impressive about the final eight of this event too is that four Polish players made it to the final eight. Half of the, the final eight were made out of, of Polish players and we still have one standing. We have a lot to be proud of and it's only a matter of time before they end up uh, being picked for the European team for the Moscone Cup. No, I agree. Only one North American, that was Alex Pagalion, and unfortunately he had to forfeit his match against Jason Shaw in the quarterfinals. He just couldn't, he had hurt himself rock jumping and uh, his ankle. He couldn't adhere to the 30 second shot clock. He had no choice, and I know Alex really well, and believe me, that would have been a painful decision, and pardon the pun. Yeah, I felt for him. I mean, the match alone was worth $10,000. So our first look at Jason here. And what a player he has become in such a short period of time. I wonder if he's gonna run into the eight. That's the move right there, the eight. Just nudge it a bit, get rid of these two. I hope he didn't mess up the eight for his sake. He might have, Jim, because he needs to get straight on that 14 to end up shooting the 12. Yeah, it's a bit tricky here. That's why he's taking so long. Just wants to be sure how he's going to take these out. 
Well, he can shoot the 15 and play position for the ball next to it, the 10 ball, and then stun the cue ball to the 8 and the 4 if he needs to. Unless he didn't have the angle to do that. Jason started playing English 8 ball before he progressed to the bigger table back in the UK. I remember him from his early days, so he'll understand patterns for eight ball real well. Oh yeah, well, he, well plus he's, he learned how to play straight pool real well. He holds a current high record. Got a little bit of an angle there. He might have to come off the rail here if he can't hold it. Wow, wow. He might be able to draw it just enough past the two. I have to assume the eight goes in the corner, Jim. Yeah, he's gonna hit it with some left so that it'll spin out to the opposite side. That's the way to shoot that. Now he's gonna have to have the ref. Oh, he's gonna shoot in the opposite pocket. Wow, so it doesn't go. This would be one hell of a shot, Jim. Yeah, well, Jason is one of the premier shot makers in the game today. He sure is. If anyone can, he can. Him and Joshua. How good did he hit that? Sweet. How good did he hit that? Stayed nice and still and punctuates his first rack with a great shot on the eight. Tremendous opening, and what a start that one for Jason Shaw to secure his first rack. Still. What an amazing shot. 2-1 to Zelensky. But a great way to start his campaign. And that'll boost his confidence. And that wasn't a rack that he could afford to lose. He'd end up down 3 nothing. So we get a chance to see his break. Flex a little muscle. Well, hopefully he won't get kicked in this time. And unfortunately, he came up dry again. Yeah, the break is such a weapon when it's working, but if it's not, it becomes a weapon for your opponent. Yeah, and it's frustrating. I, I, I know he's frustrated. I really like the solids here too, Jim. Because if he can clear those three up there and get straight on that five ball and shoot a stop shot on the two ball, if we can see the table. Once he shoots a stop shot on that two ball in the corner, he can shoot the three and run into the four and then play the eight ball. Be the host of champions en route to the semifinal did Zelensky after losing to Shaw in the first round he took out local favorite Roland Alain Roland then he beat an Asian player Chia Chen and Carlo Beato before mm -hmm. taking out Shevchek so champions got to put him in good stead and he's probably looking for a little revenge here because he did lose in the final of the International Open to Jason. Yeah, two weeks ago. But even more recently, that's who bumped him out in the first round, knocked him to the left-hand side of the draw. Mm. So even more recent revenge on his mind. And there's this saying that we have where it's very, very tough to beat the same player twice in the same event. So. Well, that's the mission Jason Shaw faces. Nice shot here. Nice stun follow there. I don't know if he went down too far. Can he still make the three in the side? 
After the two, I mean. Yeah, this is when you get to the, the latter stages of these racks, you've got to be so precise with your position. Just like straight pull. Now maybe the four yeah. even goes. I think that's why he left it there. I think you're right, Jim. And if he can make it and follow it and even hit the bottom of the 12 ball, Cuba will trickle to that side right past the eight ball. for position on the three ball. Didn't even have to. So the question here is, does the eight ball go in the same pocket? If not, he might go one, two, three rails and play the eight ball in the side pocket if it goes past the 14. Yeah, he's overcooked this, I think. It's close. He's got the one. Oh, we're about to find out if he's going in the corner or the side pocket. He's going for the side. Did he overhit that? Yeah, I thought he wanted to leave a little more angle to stay short. I think that eight did go to the corner pocket. But it's it's got half a pocket to the side, Tony. We mm -hmm. had an angle looking at it a little earlier. And when you're hitting him as good as he is, a half a pocket is nothing. <laughs> that is nothing. 3-1 confirmed here in the beautiful convention center in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Fantastic venue. And at 3-1, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. The Predator World 8-Ball Championship coming to you from beautiful San Juan, Puerto Rico. Already a 3-1 advantage for the man at the table, Victor Zelensky, and a ball down. But unfortunately, oh, well, I thought the cue ball was going to find the same pocket, Tony. Yeah. So not a bad break at all. But he's still breaking from that top rail, getting that little, giving it that little extra oomph. So I think he's hitting it slightly harder than Jason is. Jason is hitting with more control. And sometimes if, you know, a little doubt can come creep into your mind and you say to yourself, I don't want to hit it too hard because I don't want to scratch. Sometimes, you, like Tim DeRoyter said, sometimes you just got to go all out. And I think that that's what he needs to do on this table if he expects to win this match. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, a 10-7 winner over Mario He in our other semifinal. So he's in the wings waiting, probably relaxing, having a, a late lunch, nothing too heavy. Seven o'clock local time, the final will be contested. And who will oppose him? I think he needs to roll down this ball a little bit or stun follow it for the six because I don't think the six goes past the 11. No, it does not. So he has to be pretty precise here. Did he get there? It looks like he did. And that would be the shot of this rack for sure. Not an easy shot at all. That was really the key, key to this. Don't mess up the four with the 11. Got to be careful when you move the balls around. Good thing that the two is below the four because he can always shoot the stop shot in the two and then follow the four in the side for the eight in the corner. But he still has to manage the three and the one first. He might decide to do that and then shoot the two, four and go to the three for the eight instead. If he can't hold the cue ball for the one that is.
can always run into the 15 here if he wants to. Just got there. Now in playing the one, if he gets straight on the two, he'll be pretty happy. And even if he didn't get straight on, on the two, he can always roll it and play the, the four ball. Did he, did he get there? Ooh, yeah, he forget about the two ball. Now he has to shoot the four ball. Changing plans. Just like the GPS, recalculating. <laughs> recalculating. I wonder if he's going to go one rail, two rail. I think I would like to go two rails over here. Just have to be. Oh, he oh, missed okay. it, Jim. Wow, we didn't expect that at all. It's almost like he was like in between. Thinking about the cue ball too much. Yeah. Now, Jason's going to pounce on this oh, mistake, he, believe me. Oh, yeah, he, he needed this. He needed this. He was about to go down 4-1. And what a great battle he had against Joshua Filler last night, Jim. That was a special match. I heard about it. 10-8, it ended up finishing in Jason's favor, but I heard it was quality. Shot by Jason right there. Nice control. Come for the 15 in the side. draw to the center of the table. Yeah, he's got real nice tempo around the table, doesn't he? Real nice yeah. timing, too. Mm -hmm. He just exudes confidence and composure. And what a combination that is. Not to mention skill. Correct. Three, two. He's pulled one back, still. One rack adrift, but he'll break in rack number six. Predator, along with CSI, putting this world-class event together, and what an event it's been. What a venue this is. If you've never been to San Juan, the beautiful island of Puerto Rico, you've got to make time and come to this beautiful island. The weather is fantastic, the hospitality, the food. These guys are all here with purpose and for them it's business this isn't a holiday not yet anyway after today it will be you know a lot of them are happy to take home some extra Christmas money all right let's see if he makes any adjustments here with the break Jim does he try to hit it harder I think he should, especially after the last break that Zelensky had. That's what I'm talking about. He did. That's how you're supposed to hit him. If you come dry, then you try breaking from somewhere else next time, but that's the speed you need to hit him with. Unfortunately for him, he didn't make anything. And to be honest with you, too, if I see that Zelensky is breaking from where he's breaking from, I'm going to try breaking from there as well. Yeah. Boy, Jason nailed those. He's got to feel yeah. like, what more can I do? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know the feeling. It's very frustrating when you know you hit the balls as best as you could and nothing drops. Not an easy table, though, Tony. Mm -mm. Looking at it, there's problems in a couple areas. Uh, most notably, the bottom, as we see on our, on our screen right now. Yeah. He can use the three, the three or the two to get rid of that four ball. Just tap it a bit. Needs to still manage a cue ball. I like hitting the 13 first, not the four, because if you hit the four, you might trickle underneath the 13. 
And, and, and also, if you hit the top of the 13, you could also trickle behind the four if you don't move it much. The follow is a way to go here. There you go. Nice little bump. Fortunately, you bumped it a little too hard. Still has to play the four in the opposite pocket. Let's see if he has an angle on the two to draw back to where he's at. Yeah, if you hear some applause in the background, the CSI Caribbean Championships, League Championships taking place too. It was really an expo of pool here all week. World Juniors. We had the Medallia Light Puerto Rican Open that kicked things off just about a week ago. As our colleague Mark White said, it was a feast on the felt. <laughs> yeah. Looks like he's going to use the seven ball to get on the four. Oh, no, look at that. Wow, nice shot there. Surprised he took that, but he has to be more precise with the with position, but because he doesn't really have a nice angle to get on the seven. I wonder if he's going to try to go between the 10 and the seven, or he's going to try to hit the right side. Well, from his perspective, the left side of the seven. Tap it nice and lightly. Maybe he can even draw it past the 10. Nice light tap. Very nice. And he has an angle there, Jim. Well, this would be some out. If he's got enough room to be able to cue at this with comfort, follow through a little bit, he's really got to be careful, though. Oh, he has too much angle. Is he going to run into the 12 ball and then try to go there? He did. did he, can he see it? No. See, he was trying to hit the other side of the 12 ball so that he can go towards the 5. But he drew it too much. That's what I was saying, Tone. When you get down to the later stages, your precision has to be spot on. Yeah, he's going to have to jump this one. Okay. And he's playing the bank. He's called the left corner. And don't su be surprised if he makes it. He's a great jump shot shooter. Didn't miss by much, but Shaw out of his ta out of his chair again and back at the table. Gonna try to take care of that 15 now. If he doesn't like it, he can shoot the 14 and draw back. I think he's good there. I would still shoot the 14. I don't like where the 14 is laying. It's not exactly in front of the pocket. Q at 15, a lot more comfortable now. Yeah. I love shooting the 12 after the 15. But he might decide the way he's queuing, he might go to the bottom rail. He is. But I like the 12, the 13, and the 11, and the 9 because it's diagonal to the 8 in the side, so it makes it easier to get to the 8. But he's probably going to shoot the 11, 9, the 13, the 12 in the side, and roll it for the 8 in the corner. This is a nice, short, compact stroke. Good under pressure, Tony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this to square it up. The first six racks in the books here in San Juan. And nothing between these players. 3-3. Three, three. And what better time to take a short break. We'll be back.
one second. One minute, they're gonna take a break. Great to have you back. The Predator World 8 Ball Championship. This is the semifinal, our second semifinal. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz already through to the final. And awaiting an opponent. And as yet. He made a ball. He made an adjustment. Tried something different. Question is, did it pay off? Well, he made second a ball. ball break. Yeah. I, you know what? I was wondering, the first quarterfinal we did with Wojtek, Shefjak, and Solensky, it was just back and forth, dry break, dry break, dry break. And I'm thinking, why don't one of them give it a sh have the courage to try something different, just like Jason did there? Because he mm -hmm. couldn't hit the last break he had any better and got nothing. Yeah. Okay. And again, the cue ball was kicked into this area here where he really hasn't left himself anything easy. That happens quite often in eight ball. But he's going to have to come up with a shot here. Ooh, ooh. Wow. It wasn't an easy, was not an easy shot, Jim. It was not an easy shot. He was expected to make it. He expected himself to make it, but it was not an easy shot. No, over distance and cueing from the cushion too, Tony. Didn't make life easier. Yeah, well, yeah, and but when you see, if you if you were to take a look at his stroke there, he kind of pulled the stick back a bit. He decelerated the speed of the cue stick. That never helps, even if you're using a short, compact stroke, because it, it, it causes the stick to sway just enough to miss the ball. Opportunity. Yeah. See if Victor can capitalize on that miss. Now he has such a great layout here. I mean, he's going to use the six to the one and then the two to the five. We shoot the two, the six, the five after the one. Yeah, he's got options. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that's where he wanted to be, but he's going to have to shoot the two first because if he tries to shoot the six, now he has to contend with the two. That's it right there. Yeah, I'll just slow roll this in. Eight available, top end of the table. But at this level, misses are punished. Severely, yep. Victor Selinski. Gets his nose back in front. 4-3 over Shaw. He'll have the break in rack number eight. Jason finally getting a ball off the break, but forced to take on a very difficult opener. And, and I predict uh, Victor is going to continue breaking from he was breaking previously because he hasn't really had much trouble making the ball the break from there. No, and he never changed anything against Chefchek either. He's only 21 years of age, so his best years you have to feel are ahead of him. Yeah, and that uh, that's a scary prospect for all the players out there. It is. And you have so many young up-and-coming <laughs> warriors too that are going to be at that level very soon. The future is looking bright, Jim. Good time to be a pool player, especially a 21-year-old pool player. Yeah, as you said, Tony, hasn't changed anything. Still from the rail. Came up dry this time. And 
And that's the look I've seen all too often from Victor. This quarterfinal, it was just dry break after dry break. And he and his countryman, Shevchak, just made that frustrated walk back to their chairs after every break. Mm -hmm. He needs to take the solids here because the 12 does not go past that one ball, Jim. And they're, li they're laying nice over here. You can attack the one or the seven afterwards. Now might be a good time to get the one. He's just, I think he's more worried about the three than anything. The, the three is in a tricky spot here. See, I would get rid of the four, so I at least have the option for the three in the corner, the top right-hand corner. Well, you're right about him getting rid of the one, though. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is that it, it, he, he got straight on the one, too, which surprised me. Unless he's trying to draw f in a straight line to play the three in the opposite corner or the side pocket. That's what he's trying to do. Yeah, spinning it, trying to get it to the cushion. Didn't quite get there. Would have got a little closer to the three, but... This is the shot in this rack right here. I mean, question is, can he can he hit that four on the good side if he's going to run into it? If he bypasses it, doesn't want to hit it too hard just in case he runs into the nine. Oh, he shot in the corner. Very nice shot. How could he hit that one, Jim? He hit that one completely differently than he did that long. There, the cushion there. That ball never looked out. Now he's going to go between the nine and the rail. Perfect. Yeah, this one's going back and forth too, Tony. It's like watching a, a boxing match. Four, four. Lows. And at four, four again. Perfect time for us to take a short break. Don't go away. A look at the main table. The table of our focus right now. Semi-final, 4-4 between Jason Shaw, Victor Zelensky. And you can see 
players have taken a break. Crowd kind of walking around and checking things out. As I said, still the CSI League Championships, the Caribbean League Championships going on. But Tony, how impressed have you been with what Predator and CSI put together in, in Puerto Rico? And I know Karim lives in Puerto Rico, but mm -hmm. what he has sourced here, second to none. Well, given that my family's in Puerto Rico and I got a chance to see them besides that, what they've done here is they've gone above and beyond. I mean, it's it, it exceeded my expectations by far. Yeah, it's as nice a venue as I've seen, you know, 30 plus years and traveling around the world, playing snooker and, uh, and commentating in all the high profile Q sport events. This is as nice as I've seen. And a buddy of mine who lives here in San Juan kept telling me, wait till you see it, it's a nice painting. And I said, okay, okay, okay. But when I actually saw it, I said, wow, this is a happening place. And then the Distrito T-Mobile that they have across the street, all forms of entertainment, all kinds. They have a movie theater, bars, restaurants, you name it. We've got quite a bit of our cash over mm -hmm. there, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've tried to help, done mm -hmm. our part to help the local economy. We sure have. Try to get Marcus Shamat to dig into his pocket every now and then. It's like <laughs> pulling teeth, but we won't go there. Uh, love Marcus. You gotta love Marcus. If he's if he's watching this on his phone, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> we love you anyway, Marcus. I'm just kidding. He paid last night. Okay, I want to make that crystal clear to all our folks at home. Marcus Shamat paid last night. So there is hope for him after all. <laughs> <laughs> all those vicious rumors, <laughs> all dispelled. Well, we have both players walking back to the arena. Ready for some more action here. And they will have had a little time on the table. I mean, the uh, Sanchez Ruiz semifinal. But uh, he took out Mario He 10-7, that semi. That took a little longer than expected, so this one started a little later. And Francisco was down 7-5 that match. Yes, he won the last five to run out a winner and uh, awaiting as yet an undetermined opponent. But finally poised here at four apiece. The race to 10. And the final, I believe, will be a race to 13. That's correct. So a little longer final. So one of these guys is going to want to have a little break. The final is going to be at 7 o'clock local time, 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So here we go. Rack number nine. Second ball break again. Did he make something? Uh-uh. Left it wide open, Jim. Wide open. Yeah, nothing you can say that you can't see. Yeah, the, the, the 13 is going to be the tricky part here. He's looking to see if there's any way to get rid of that 9 first before he attacks the 10 because the 10 is a good candidate to play position for the 13 in the upper left-hand corner pocket once the 9 is in. But it looks like the 10 is the only real easy shot that he has here. So he's gonna have to find another way, maybe using one of the side pocket. <laughs> the nine or the 15 to get there. <laughs> Hear that chanting in you, the background? Well, it's applause. They must have heard that Marcus Shamat paid last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marcus is gonna love you after this. <laughs> after <that>. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly sure what, uh, Victor was trying to do there, but it turned out well. And I'm definitely not sure. Oh, okay, he's trying to play the combination for a second there. I thought he wound up behind the ball. Still got the one tricky. Yeah, I 13 think he's ball. It's it's not ideally placed. Mm -hmm. Well, does the 13 go now? 
If it doesn't, then he has to shoot the 15, 14, and the 13. Unless he wants to move it now. He can move it a bit, just a little bit. Or oh. not even. He had an angle. Didn't look like he had an angle there, Jim, but he did. Dropped nicely behind it. Very nice. He controls that stun follow so well, doesn't he? Yeah, he's played a couple shots, and he's been so precise. And that's not an easy shot to learn. It's not. I like what he's doing here. I like going two rails, because even if you run into the three, you're right on the eight ball. You just have to make sure that you manage the speed just slightly past the seven. Well, I guess he changed his mind. So I guess he's going to go two rails and into the three or past it. Now he's drawing the ball back. Oh, he had an angle. Well, this was a hell of a rat, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's more important that he's got an idea what he's doing, Tony. Absolutely. Eight secured, it seems like every time. Shaw comes back at him. Zelensky's got the answer. Stays in front, 5-4. It'll be interesting to watch him break again. I still think he's going to break from the same spot. He's definitely not going to try the second ball break after watching Jason come up dry. No. I thought that he might change his break in the quarterfinal leading up to this semi, and he never did. Jason, there's no doubt that that man's got a lot of courage. He'll change and adapt to whatever needs to be changed. He is a competitor. Staying with Darren Appleton and uh, Elliot Sanderson and mm -hmm. Jason Klatt, the four of them, they got an Airbnb. Jason Klatt had a pretty good run in this last 16. I think Darren got to the last 16 too, if I'm not mistaken. Good for Darren. I know Darren's been on the comeback. It's impressive that Jason Clad disappeared for three years, shows up, and then comes into the money. And beat John Mora. Made a ball. En route to the money. So two Canadians, we were guaranteed, that's how I knew we were guaranteed a Canadian in the last 16. And then Alex Pegalion, he was the only North American left in the last eight. All European players, strong Very showing strong. by Europe. He's gonna have to figure out a way to uh, play that nine ball, even if it's a bank shot, if he decides to go with the stripes. But the solids are really nice here. He's going to like this. He's going to have to bank that eight ball, Jim. I don't know if the six goes. I don't know if he was trying to get the six out of there and ran into the eight. I'm, I'm not sure what he was trying to do there. Well, there you can see that camera angle is clearly showed. Six not available to the corner pocket. Well, I meant past the 12 ball. I don't know if the six goes past the 12 ball. So th that's why I thought he was trying to hit it and maybe ran into the eight because maybe it doesn't go past the 12. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, it but doesn't, doesn't look like it goes, Tony. Yeah, from here it looks like it doesn't go. Well, we might see two bank shots. <laughs> no, he can draw it back here. If he can draw it back here. Ooh, wow, look at that. Look at that power stroke. Well, the eight doesn't have to be banked now. Nope. He's got it in the open. So the only problem ball as it sits, the six. And again, assuming it doesn't go by the 12. If it does, he's golden. If it doesn't, you might see him leave the angle on the two to get up to it right here. Mm -hmm. And we can only assume he's going to play the 
The six in the lower left hand corner pocket from the other view, correct? Yeah. That was a good call there, Jim. short of ideal position there. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna have to come with a good shot on the six. He won't have to do much with the cue ball, stay at the same end of the table. Yeah, even if he ran into the 12, he should be fine as long as he manages the speed. He just can't, seems to come with the shots every time Jason threatens him. This has been a great run out. This was far oh, yeah. from easy. <coughs> Zelensky, 6 4. Two racks clear. It's a race to 10. And this Polish star, 21 years of age. What a player he is, and what a player he is going to become. Yeah, you have him, you have Conrad. Mieszko, Wojciech, Daniel Matiau, who, who just uh, finished second. Yeah, the, we had four, four, four Polish players in the last eight yeah. in this Predator World 8, Paul. I predict one of them are going to make the Moscone Cup next year, at least one. I'm wondering who they left home, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. But I agree with you. I think it's only a matter of time. And you know, you've got to credit the European Tour for the the sudden rebirth of all these top players in Europe and mm -hmm. the dominance that they're they're showing. That's correct. Euro Tour has been going on for many many years, right? It has, and uh, without doubt, the hardest tour in the world right now, toughest one. It's just breeding champions. And the great thing about it is uh, every year when they have the uh, European Championships, they have multiple disciplines for the European Championships. Yes, they do. We see a successful break yet again from Victor. So he's starting to get the measure of the break and that's an ominous sign for Jason Shaw. Though you'd never know it looking at his face. Has to be concerned. Looks like he's going to get that 13 and then the 12 or the 15. Fourteen is just the only tricky shot here, but if he leaves it between the one ball and the three ball, should be fine. Or get straight. How could he hit that one, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> he got dead straight. I tell you, if whoever makes it to the final is is gonna. It's going to be one hell of a final. No, that's a guarantee. I mean, you've got the world number one waiting in the wings. And the only difference I would say is that Francisco was consistently making balls on the break. So these two players, if they don't end up stepping up their break, it's going to be a little tough to beat Francisco in the final. And just to let everybody know, the World Junior Champion, surprise, surprise, from Poland. Yep. Simon Corral. So, looking to make the double here. Viktor Zelensky now 7 4. And starting to steamroll Jason Shaw. And again, Shaw looking around. He's got to stay positive, stay in the moment. Await the chance, hope it comes. 
and be equal to the task. Yeah, that World Junior Championship I was telling you about, young Simon Corral, that was the World Nine Ball Championship, under 19. Got a, got a chance to see that yesterday, Tony. Very impressive, I got to watch him play a bit. He's uh, very impressive. And what was cool about it is that every single top Polish player that played in the event was here to make sure to, the, to congratulate him. It's awesome, it's an awesome feeling. Yeah, players that you know he's growing up watching and aspiring to be like. Yeah, he's starting to see some success on the break now, too. It felt like it was only a matter of time. Someone had to get the break going. That's why I said I'm surprised Jason hasn't made an attempt to break from where Zelensky is breaking from. I think he overhit that a bit. I think he was trying to play position for the seven there, Jen. But nothing he can't handle. There's nothing this kid can't handle. He can shoot the, the three, six, and then the seven if he wants, or attack the balls up there and then come back for the six and the seven. 21 years of age. Tony, you're in the semifinal of the Predator World 8 ball. <laughs> how are you feeling? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How do you like it? <laughs> He's loving it. Now over here, he got a little bit of an awkward angle on the two ball. It's going to have to hit it super soft, not get too much of a bounce off the rail, but he doesn't want to risk going behind the 14. I guess he's gonna shoot the six to the seven then. Pretty sure he tried to play the five ball, but it was tough to hold the cue ball there. It's a tricky shot here, Jim, because you have to avoid going behind the, uh, the 15 possibly. And yet you want to end up with a proper angle. Look how good he hit that with inside spin. Yeah, and a shot that top players play second nature. Mm -hmm. But for the club players, spinning a ball over distance, hours and hours of practice to be able to understand that deflection of that cue ball off the cue tip to play a shot like that. Yep. This one has to be struck with just enough speed to make sure you have a little draw or slide on it, unless you can spin it to the left like he did there, but I think he overhit it, did he? Nope, he's good. Yeah, he's not bad at all. For an 8-4 lead, just taking a little extra time, composing himself because 8-4, is a massive hurdle for Jason Shaw to try and come back against. And eight for it is split the uprights with that eight. And this young man has found the holy grail. Eight four in front and motoring on. And given that, we're gonna take another short break, folks. Don't go away.
welcome back. This young Polish star is orchestrating quite a symphony out there. And Tony, as we were saying just while we were in break, I think he's starting to enjoy himself. He is, and he's, like you said, he's very relaxed, poised, confident. And I have to say, even I've seen a difference in his game and consistency even from last year when I started playing the Predator Pro Billiard Series. He's been making it to the finals and semifinals of a lot of events. Oh, he, made it, he did it again. He made two this time. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Is it straight? Does he have a combination? Well, nope. He's going to have to take a little time to figure this roadmap out. But this is not a connect the dots rack, this one. I mean, if he really wanted to, Jim, he can shoot the 14 if he wanted to <laughs> and, and use that ball in the center in the center to shoot a combination five to the 13. If he decides to go with stripes, that is. If he's gonna go with solids in, he's probably gonna use a seven to get that out of there. It's just, it's a shame that he, he might have to use two balls to, to take care of that cluster. Possibly the one ball to go into that, maybe have the seven as an insurance, and also use the seven to break them out. What are you thinking, Jim? Well, he's got, as you said, Tony, I think it's either the one or the seven, given that he's taken solids. Mm -hmm. He wants to leave an angle, and he'd like to do it sooner rather than later. A little short of where he wanted to be there. I think he was trying to come around on the four, play, get straight in on the four to leave that angle on the seven. Yeah, the key here is to try to get rid of both the five and the 13 off the rail so that eight has passage there. Oh. It's a little tougher there, but at least he has a shot. And if anyone can get out, Victor can. <laughs> well, you have a look at the balls now. If he knocks yeah. the three in straight on the one, mm -hmm. stops the one, that'll leave the five. Yep. So all of a sudden, with one shot, he's given himself a chance at the rack. And more importantly, to get on the hill against one of the greatest players in the world. Not that he's not, because he's definitely up there too, Jim. Wow, yeah. You know, wow. I was gonna it's, say- like He had a little movement there. As he starts to get a little closer to the finish line, he's gonna have to lasso his nerves. And now, Jason, you're four racks behind. Can you make a dent in that deficit? Wow, look at that. Well, that must have been his uncle that was applauding, but that was a good shot. Because right away, he's got his 15 in, in play. Eight still tricky, but that did develop the 15. Yeah, he's probably going to use a 10 to shoot the 8 in the upper right-hand corner pocket. to get right on this nine ball to play the 10 and attain an angle to get on that eight ball. One thing that'll be a little tricky here, Jim, is if he can get rid of one of those balls, that would be great. That way he doesn't have to worry about having the cue over one of them. Nice little touch. Did he get there? Sure did. He can even run into that five and get it out of the rail or just slide it right in between them. Very nice, very Not nice. Not bad, just slightly short of what would be perfect, but up the right-hand cushion to get to 8-5. Yeah, I think he wanted to make sure he didn't have to bridge over the five and the three, and he, he that was a great rack. Yeah, a much-needed rack win. 
the miss from Victor. He had to pounce, and he did. The Predator World 8-Ball Championship may have found a home for a few years anyway. San Juan, Puerto Rico, the convention center here. I think we're coming back here. I've heard for three years they've signed a deal, and that's got to make players ecstatic. Chance to come back to this beautiful island. Yeah, the dates are already set for next year, November 14th through the 21st. Well, there you go, folks. Book your flights. Come a little early. Enjoy the island. Taste before. the flavor here. Back to the middle of the table for the break. He's going to go all out. I see him going all out on this one. Yes, <laughs> the celebration. <laughs> see, even if he doesn't feel comfortable breaking from the rail, Jim, I think the key there is study where the line is from where he, Zelensky is breaking from the rail and put the cue ball on that same line, but by the line. A little bit of a sarcastic <laughs> celebration there from Eagle Eye. But it makes all the difference in the world, you know that. And this is gonna be as easy a, a run out, I think, as Jason's gonna see for eight ball. This is straightforward, and this isn't gonna take long. So eight six is gonna be a reality in about a minute's time or less. Quick look just to confirm that eight's got a pocket past the two and it does. He could elect to even play this, and he could have gone the other side and played it to the other pocket, even if it didn't have a pocket past the two. It was in prime position. But he got it straight on that eight ball. He got straight just to hit it to that side of the pocket. That was fast. Eight, six. Now are the alarm bells going off in the Zelensky camp? I think, it all, I think it all depends on how he does this break here. Yeah, another good break from Shaw. And you may see a look of concern because remember, he was 8-4 in front and shooting. Missed that long three into the top left corner. That's what brought Shaw out of his chair. Good thing about that kid is He'll forget it immediately if he gets another opportunity. <laughs> he has to. Looks like a good rack. A referee, Mr. Payne. Passing the cue ball to Jason Shaw. And he's going to look to take the 15th rack apart. 8-6 he trails. Oh, wow. Wow. He's starting to really hit him. Really good. This is going to be, be another one-minute rack, Jim. Look at that second ball going straight into the side pocket, and the other ball, the four, just went straight to the upper left-hand corner pocket. And how many times have we seen these top players run out matches? And mm -hmm. he's got the chance to do just that. That's correct. Well, I'm not sure if he was trying to get behind and play the 13 to the same side. 10 goes into the corner, so he's got options. Yeah, I think he's going to shoot the 13 next, and then the 14, 9, and the 15 in the side to come down for the 8.
the key is a 14 to the 9. And if he ends up where he wants to get on the 9, he'll end up with a perfect angle on the 15 to go right in between that 6 and that 8 ball, Jim. He can even just tap it in. Well, this is three in a row, Tony. Yeah. All of a sudden, this semifinal is starting to heat up. 8-7 in favor of Zielinski. Jason Shaw marching on. And still Zielinski with no look of concern. At least not outwardly. Shaw has to be feeling like he's putting the heat on his opponent now. How his opponent will respond. Does his opponent have the experience to be able to handle the pressure when a champion like Shaw starts to put the heat on. Tony, what, do you, what does a player think about when you know you've got a player coming back at you? You had a pretty tidy lead. Now you've got a player coming back at you. What sort of thoughts do you think about to try and stay in the moment? Forgetting, letting go of the mistake because you have to be mentally prepared for your next opportunity at the table, assuming you get one. That's all you can do. And you have to assume you're going to get one. And you have to assume you have to get You have to be prepared because if you're not, then you're more, more, more capable of making a mistake again. And this time, Jim, nothing fell in. Nothing fell in. Well, as we said, you have to assume. He's been sat in his chair for three racks. And then he went to that chair, missing an opportunity. Looking for problems on the table, Tony. I don't see any. Neither do I. When you get straight on that two ball, that four goes right past. And he could do it anyway. I'm sorry. Go ahead, I was going to say the hill is calling. Yeah. So he's rather just get rid of that now. That way he doesn't have to worry about going back up there again. And he hit it with absolute perfect speed, Jim. I mean, look how good he hit that ball. He's either going to stop it or slide it over a bit. And then play the eight ball in the same pocket as the six. Do a little in between or here. You know what I like about both these players? They get on with it. They do. When the rack is there and they've got it by the throat, they don't mess around. Yeah. And Zelinski, Victor Zelinski, come on down. This is your time. 9-7. One more rack for a place in the final. And with that, we are going to run away for a short break, but you don't want to miss the last few racks.
We are back. The main table for the Predator World 8 Ball Championship. This is the semifinal. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz waits in the wings. He is the finalist awaiting an opponent. And this man, Victor Zielinski, well, he's on the hill, breaking for the last time in this semi. 9-7. He leads Jason Shaw. Uh-oh. <laughs> and gravity. Yeah. He's still good. Found one ball. Made two. Three. Three? No, two. Three made three balls. Yeah. I was waiting for gravity to find that six in the corner. That would have made his path a little clearer, too. disgruntled about something. I think he called the sixth ball once and the referee didn't hear him and he's trying to make sure that he takes advantage of the shot clock. He doesn't want to uh, commit a foul. Can he see the one? I'm not sure if he can see the one, Jim. If he can see the one, he's golden. If he can't... Yeah. If, he's, if he can see the one, he's out. Yep, you can see it. Now, can he hold himself together? The nerve endings have to be tingling right now in this 21-year-old. Yeah, I like shooting the three, the two, the seven, the four, and with gaining an angle in the four to shoot the five. Unless he's playing the five now. Is that what he was trying to do? I think he wanted to get lower. I think he has to shoot the five now anyway. Yeah, well, it doesn't go in the other corner. He, uh, it doesn't make sense to shoot the two. But he's doing the smart thing. He's, he's going to his little battle tent, what I like to call the battle tent, prepare himself mentally, give himself a chance to uh, refocus and click the refresh button. Steady, nice and Very still steady. over the ball. You know what the crazy thing is? This match is worth $20,000. You know what I think, Tony, and, and I think you've been there, you can agree. They never think about the money. Do we they? don't. We don't. We don't because we're, we're just so busy trying to focus. But he's there. He is there. Mm -hmm. Straight to roll through for the eight. And Jason Shaw will be shaking his hand. Again, that stun follow through that has worked so well for him. And at 21 years of age, Victor Zielinski, come on down. You're in the final. Victor S Sanchez Ruiz, sorry, is going to be opposing you in that final. What a performance. 10 7 over Jason Shaw. The final again, just to remind everyone 7 o'clock local time, 6 o'clock Eastern. Tony, your thoughts, real fast. Poland is very proud of this kid right now. It's very impressive. Uh, we're looking forward to a great final, Jim. We all are, folks. We hope you're going to be there to join it. For myself, Jim White, want to thank Tony Robles. Tony's going to be here walking you through the final, folks. Enjoy. Thank you, Jim.